My name is Heidi Abeg. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Webster, Chamberlain and Bean in Washington, D.C. And I'm here today to talk about um, some of the uh, provisions in the various uh, laws recently passed by Congress in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Um, uh, today, the primary focus will be on the Paycheck Protection Program, um, as well as some other relief that was in the Phase 3 bill uh, signed into law on March 27th. Um, that law, called the, Corona, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, or the CARES Act, uh, contains a mixture of uh, relief measures for businesses, um, including small businesses. I'll start with the provision uh, that has, um, that most everyone has been talking about, and that is the Emergency Small Business Loan Program within the Small Business Administration 7A Loan Program, also known as the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP. Um, it is part of the CARES Act, which was a $2.2 trillion package. Um, it contains a $349 billion authorization um, for the uh, PPP program. It in extends through December 31st, 2020. It allows uh, loans of up to $10 million to four profit small businesses including sole proprietors, the self-employed and independent contractors, and along with uh, 501c3 and 50119 nonprofit organizations. Um, with, and those must have fewer than 500 employees and be in existence on February 15, 2020. The covered loan period begins on February 15, 2020 and ends on June 30th, 2020. Uh, the PPP loans under the CARES Act uh, permits all current 7A lenders um, as well as uh, new lenders that join to make determinations on the borrower's eligibility and creditworthiness without going through all of the SBA's normal channels. It gives the authority to lenders that will later on join the PPP to make these loans and it has a, an expedite, expedited process for those lenders to join the program. There is no repayment ability determination necessary. The lenders are to look at if the uh, small business was operational on February 15, 2020, and if they have employees for whom they paid salaries and payroll taxes, or if they paid an independent contractor. The SBA guarantees 100% of these loans through the end of 2020 and up to the full principal amount of the qualifying loans are forgivable. Uh, the common question is when can I apply? Well, you can apply today if you are a small business or a sole proprietorship. Uh, that, that process opened on April 3rd, um, although there has been some difficulties with the rollout um, so some people are still not able to apply, um, but more uh, lenders are coming online every day. Um, if you're an independent contractor or a self-employed individual, you can apply beginning on April 10th. But because of the cap on the funds, um, the sooner the better. Um, already there is talk um, of a phase four uh, to provide additional funds into this program um, because of the expectation that the limit um, that Congress appropriated is going to be reached uh, before the June 30th uh, ending date. Um, this number, the $22.2 billion is already outdated, um, uh, but um, as of Friday, Bank of America had reported that they had taken in applications for $22.2 billion in loans. Um, and on Friday, when uh, the program opened, only two banks were processing loans, uh, but more have since come online. Um, and because of the popularity of this program, uh, many lenders have said that they are only taking applications from current customers. And some len lenders have further prioritized among their current customers by helping those who have current borrowing relationships 
first before turning to others who may just have a business checking account. Uh, you can apply for a PPP loan if you have 500 or fewer employees. Um, that includes your full, your part-time, or any other status. And if those employees, if their principal place of residence is in the United States. You had to have been in operation on February 15, 2020, and you had to have had employees for whom you paid salaries and payroll taxes or paid independent contractors. Or you have to be an individual who operates under a sole proprietorship or as an independent contractor and were in operation on February 15th of this year. There are some who are not eligible to apply. Um, you cannot apply if you're engaged in any activity that's illegal under federal, state, or local law. Uh, you cannot apply if you are a household employer. Um, additionally, if you are an owner of 20% or more of the business and um, you have been incarcerated, probation, um, are subject to an indictment, or have been convicted of a felony with a, but within the last five years, you are also ineligible. If uh, you or any of the owners have ever obtained an SBA loan um, and it is currently delinquent, or you've defaulted within the last seven years and caused a loss to the government, you are also ineligible. Uh, you apply through a lender. You do not apply through the SBA itself. And this is a difference um, with some of the other uh, SBA loans that are out there. Um, you can visit uh, the SBA's website and you can find the link on the screen um, to look for participating lenders. And again, most are prioritizing. So um, you should check to see if your bank or credit union um, is an SBA lender and if they are uh, participating in the program. If they are, you will use SBA form 2483 and submit that through your lender's website. Now you're gonna need some information to uh, complete your application. Um, generally, and this is gonna depend on your lender because some lenders um, have uh, different requirements and are requiring slightly different things. But generally, you're going to need to submit documentation that establishes your eligibility. So payroll processor records, payroll tax filings, uh, some lenders have even been requiring Form 1099 miscellaneous um, or income and, income and expenses from a sole proprietorship. If you don't have that documentation, you're going to have to provide other documents uh, such as bank records that are going to be sufficient uh, to demonstrate your qualifying payroll amount. If you're a current customer of your lender, um, you probably will not be required to submit much additional information about the identity um, of your business. But if you are applying through a new lender, um, you're going to have to comply with that lender's Know Your Customer rules, and we'll have to provide additional documents to verify um, the business's identity as well as the identity of the owners. So, for example, articles of incorporation, certificates of good standing, um, and similar documents. Again, the application um, is SBA Form 2483. It can be found on treasury.gov's website. Um, if you have obtained it from a different place, make sure you use the most updated form. It has gone through several updates and you don't wanna be using one of the older forms. Uh, E-signatures are permissible, so this can all be done online. And a change from one of the previous forms is that now a representative of the applicant can certify for the business as a whole if that person is legally authorized to do so. There's a number of, applica number of certifications that you're required to make on the application. And I won't go through all of those, but you should pay close attention uh, to what you are certifying because the form is submitted under penalties of perjury. Um, so pay close attention uh, to those. Uh, one of the uh, certifications that is giving some attention is the first one, and that is that the loan is necessary due to the uncertainty of current economic conditions caused by COVID-19. Um, the SBA 
uh, and neither the Treasury have provided any guidance as to what that means. Um, does that mean that the uh, small business can't make payroll? Does that mean that the small business in two months may not be able to continue? Um, again, uh, we've not had any guidance as to what um, that currently means. Um, but some are uh, concerned that that language um, could be used um, to um, potentially go after businesses who don't need the money um, but have applied for the loans. So that is worth um, taking a look at. And again, there's additional certifications. Um, I will leave those um, to you to review. Um, just a couple to note, um, you are also certifying that to the extent feasible, you are only going to purchase American-made equipment and products. Um, and you're also uh, certifying that where applicable, you will comply with uh, civil rights and other limitations uh, described on the form. And then finally, at the end, you certify that all of the information that you provide in the app application and all of the other documents that are submitted with it are true and accurate. Uh, the next question is, well, how much can I borrow? Um, I think I qualify, so I want to know how much I can borrow. The maximum loan amount is $10 million, and there's a formula, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, which determines uh, the amount of your loan. Uh, but generally, the amount of your loan is 2.5 times the average total monthly payroll costs from 2019. And it's important to note that your payroll costs are capped at $100,000 annualized for each employee um, or partner or other individual um, that is counted in your payroll costs. So in other words, uh, your loans can be up to two months of your average monthly payroll costs from 2019, plus an additional 25% of that amount. Uh, when preparing the applications, you need to first gather the documents that you're going to need. And again, as I mentioned, uh, different lenders uh, are requiring different things. So it's helpful at the beginning to gather everything that you might need. You're going to need documentation that verifies the number of full-time equivalent employees on the payroll and their pay rates for the covered period. Uh, generally, that's going to be January 1 through Jan through December 31st, 2019, although there are some lenders that are using more of a rolling period and requiring um, the payroll from uh, maybe March 2019 uh, through March 2020. So again, it might be helpful to check with your lender to see um, what they're going to require. You will need a state and federal payroll tax filings. Um, that's going to be W-3 form, uh, Form 941s, uh, your 2019 payroll register, summary of 401k matching and other retirement contributions, and a summary of your 2019 State Unemployment Tax Act taxes. Uh, you're, you will need your tax ID number. Uh, you may need to provide additional information to your lender if you use a doing business as or an assumed name. And you will also need to provide information on any owner or owners. And again, this may vary slightly by your lender, um, but generally you'll need the dates of birth, social security numbers, and residence addresses. Ne uh, next, once you have gathered all of your information, you're gonna compute your uh, payroll costs for 2019. And you can do this in a spreadsheet that you create um, or if you use a payroll processor, uh, some of the um, larger payroll processors um, have done the work for you, and you can go in and see if they have um, created reports that you can prepare um, and just enter in the, the range that you want and kind of pick um, what you want for the report, and it will prepare the report for you. So. Um, you should check with your payroll processor first to see if they've already done the work for you. If they haven't, or if you'd like to do it on your own, you can create your own uh, spreadsheet or chart, 
and you're going to be uh, looking to calculate your payroll costs. So again, your payroll, your 401k matching and other retirement, your state unemployment taxes, uh, the employer portion of any group health insurance, and then if you're a partnership, any guaranteed payments to partners in 2019. And in the first column, you're going to create, you're going to um, calculate your yearly, your 2019 total, and you'll subtract from that any exclusions, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and then you'll, in the next column, you'll uh, determine your monthly payroll costs. So you'll divide your yearly total by 12, and then you'll multiply that monthly amount by 2.5 to get the amount of your loan. So there's some important notes when you're calculating the yearly 2019 payroll amounts. All gross payments to individuals outside the United States have to be excluded. And payments, wages, and other payments to partners in 2019 in excess of $100,000 um, have to be excluded. So you are capped at $100,000 uh, per person. You'll also need to take into account when you're uh, calculating the amount of the loan, um, any outstanding amount of an economic injury disaster loan that was made by the SBA uh, between January 3rd, 2020 and April 3rd, 2020, um, less the amount of any advance under an economic injury disaster COVID-19 loan. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, once you've uh, calculated the amount, and we'll go through some examples in a minute, um, what can you use the loan for? Well, the loan can be used for payroll costs, including benefits. It can also be used to pay the interest on mortgage obligations um, if it was incurred before February 15th of 2020, uh, rent under lease agreements that were enforced before February 15th, and utilities for which service began before February 15th, um, including electricity, gas, water, telephone, or internet. Uh, and then further, you can use this on payroll costs, but uh, what what is considered a payroll cost? Well, as we talked about before, salaries, wages, commissions, or tips um, is included as a payroll cost, but those are capped at $100,000 on an annualized basis for each employee. You can also include empl employee benefits, such as paid sick or medical leave, vacation, parental leave, or any family medical leave. Um, it also includes any allowance for separation or severance payments. It includes group health insurance um, and possibly a dental and vision as well, a retirement benefits, state and local employment taxes, and then any um, wages from self-employment, again, capped at $100,000. Um, excluded from payroll costs are compensation of employees or partners in excess of $100,000, uh, payroll taxes and income taxes withheld between February 15th, 2020 and June 30th, 2020. And uh, just a note here, while you were able to include payroll taxes when you are calculating your 2019 payroll costs, when you get your loan proceeds, you are not able to pay the payroll taxes out of those loan, pro loan proceeds. So payroll taxes from February 15th to June 30th cannot be paid for with the loan proceeds. Uh, you also cannot use the loan proceeds to pay any compensation of an individual who resides outside the United States. And you can't use the loan proceeds to pay any qualified sick leave wages if you're taking the credit under the Families First Coronavirus Response Act or any qualified family leave wages um, that you take a credit for under that act. So now turning to some examples um, in calculating your uh, loan amount. Uh, the first example is a simple example. And in this example, you have no employees that make more than $100,000. Uh, 
uh, if your annual payroll is $120,000, uh, that makes your average monthly payroll $10,000. So you would multiply that by 2.5 to determine your maximum loan, loan amount, which would be $25,000. In the second example, um, the small business has some employees that make more than $100,000. So if the annual payroll is $1.5 million, from that you would subtract all compensation amounts in excess of $100,000, which in this example will be $300,000. So that would make your annual payroll $1.2 million. Divide that by 12 to get your average monthly payroll of $100,000. Multiply that by 2.5 to get to $250,000, which, which would be your maximum loan amount. If you, in the third example, if you have some employees that make more than $100,000 and you have that outstanding economic injury disaster loan of $10,000, in this example, uh, your annual payroll again is $1.5 million. You subtract the compensation in excess of $100,000 to end up with $1.2 million, uh, dividing by 12 months to get an average monthly qualifying payroll of $100,000. Multiply that by 2.5 to get $250,000. And then you add your economic injury disaster loan of $10,000 um, to get your maximum loan amount of $260,000. Uh, forgiveness, uh, that's the, um, the, the attractive portion of the PPP program. Borrowers are eligible for forgiveness equal to the amount that is spent during the eight-week period after the origination date of your loan on payroll costs, on the interest payments for the mortgage that was incurred prior to fe February 15th, for the payment of any rent or utility um, which was uh, incurred before February 15th. Uh, some important caveats about that forgiveness. The amount forgiven cannot exceed the principal amount of your PPP loan. And again, the amount forgiven cannot include compensation of individuals in excess of $100,000 in annual salary. It also cannot include compensation of individuals with the principal place of residence outside the United States. And it cannot include uh, leave wages already covered by the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. And not more than 25% of the forgiven amount may be used for non-payroll payroll costs. Um, that is your payment of mortgage interest, um, rent, or utilities. So only 25% of your loan amount can be used for those items. And uh, further, uh, the amount forgiven will be reduced proportionately by any reduction in employees uh, retained compared to 2019. And it's also reduced if you reduce in pay any employee beyond 25% of their 2019 compensation. So if you maintain employment for the eight weeks after the loan origination, or you rehire employees by June 30th, you will have your loan forgiven in whole or in part, which effectively turns your loan into a grant. If you rehire employees that were previously laid off due to the COVID-19 crisis, you will not be penalized for having a reduced payroll at the beginning of the loan period. And another important uh, thing to note is that any PPP loan amount forgiven is not considered gross income for federal tax purposes. So a summary of the forgiveness portion. Your loan forgiveness is reduced if you decrease your employee headcount or if you decrease salaries and wages by more than 25% for any employee who made less than $100,000 in 2019 and you have until June 30th to restore your employment and salary levels for any changes that were made between February 15th and April 26th of this year. Um, 
you have to apply for loan forgiveness with your lender. It is not automatic. And to do that, you're going to have to uh, submit required documentation. Um, and once you submit that documentation, you are required under the CARES Act to receive a decision within 60 days. Uh, since the program is just starting, uh, we don't have a lot of guidance on exactly what will be required to submit it, but generally it's going to uh, be documentation um, that's going to verify your payments during the eight-week period. So you're going to need to verify the number of employees, uh, their pay rates, and then um, verify any payments on the, that mortgage interest, those leases, and utility obligations. So it will require sufficient documentation. So if you don't already have um, some comprehensive record keeping practices to track all of that, um, you should develop that now. Uh, the terms of the loan. Uh, the loan terms are the same for everyone. Uh, the SBA's usual requirement that you try to obtain loan funds from other sources is waived under the PPP program. No collateral is required and no loan fees may be charged for loan applications. Uh, no personal guarantees are required. There's no prepayment penalty. Uh, the interest rate is 1%. Um, and only one PPP loan per business is allowed. Any loan amounts that are not forgiven at the end of one year are carried forward as an ongoing loan with a term of a maximum of two years. And again, the forgiven amount is not included in taxable income. The first six months of payments, the principal and the interest are automatically deferred, but the interest continues to accrue during deferment. And for any uh, principal amount that is forgiven, any interest that accrues on that principal amount is also forgiven. And the SBA has no recourse against any individual member, partner, shareholder for non-payment unless the individual uses the loan proceeds for unauthorized purposes. So some important things to know about PPP loans. Uh, the CARES Act does contain a limitation on a borrower from receiving a PPP loan and an economic injury disaster loan through SBA for the same purpose. So if a borrower had obtained an EIDL loan unrelated to COVID-19, it can still apply for a PPP loan. And there is the option to refinance that loan into the PPP loan. If a borrower obtains an emergency economic injury disaster loan grant award, which we'll talk about in a minute, if they receive that $10,000, uh, that will be subtracted from the amount that's forgiven under any PPP loan. Um, a business which has a PPP loan forgiven is not eligible for the payroll tax credits in the CARES Act. And uh, finally, the CARES Act does contain a sense of the Senate for the SBA administrator to issue guidance to lenders to uh, make sure that the processing and disbursement of PPP loans prioritizes small business concerns and enti entities in underserved and rural markets. Um, but given the fact that this is already rolled out and um, there has been no such guidance, it's unclear um, exactly how that is going to come into play. Uh, turning next to one of the other pieces in the CARES Act that may be of interest uh, to small businesses, and that is the Emergency Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Uh, the CARES Act appropriates an additional $10 billion into this lo loan program and expands eligibility to these loans and waives some requirements for applicants, um, which can include businesses with fewer than 500 employees. And again, businesses can apply for both PPP loans and EIDLs as long as they are not used for the same purpose. And the CARES Act establishes what's called an emergency grant uh, to allow an eligible small business which has applied for an EIDL due to COVID-19 to request an advance of that, on that loan of not more than $10,000. 
and the SBA is to distribute that $10,000 amount within three days. Uh, applicants are not required to repay those advance payments, even if they are later denied an economic injury disaster loan. Uh, some of the basics of the economic injury disaster loan include that no personal guarantee is required. Um, like the PPP loan, you are also not required to demonstrate um, unavailability of credit elsewhere. Um, you had to have been in operation on January 31st of this year. Um, you're also um, required to self-certify under penalty of perjury in the loan document. Uh, these loans are not done through a lender, but are done through the SBA. And the SBA can approve and offer small EIDLs based solely on a borrower's credit score or use some other alternative method for determining the ability to repay. Uh, EIDLs carry a 3.75% interest rate for for-profit organizations and a 2.75% interest rate for nonprofit organizations. And up to $2 million uh, can be borrowed. And again, that emergency grant of $10,000 uh, requires only that the SBA verify that the entity is an eligible applicant, um, and they're required to uh, self-certify under penalty of perjury that they are eligible. Um, and again, that advance payment has to be considered when you're determining the PPP loan forgiveness so that there's no double counting. Uh, the grant can be used for providing paid leave to employees, maintaining payroll, meeting increased costs to obtain materials, making your rent or mortgage payments, and repaying obligations that cannot be met due to revenue losses. Uh, the CARES Act also has another provision, uh, provision that is um, useful for some small businesses, and that's the Employee Retention Payroll Tax Credit. The CARES Act creates a refundable payroll tax credit of up to $5,000 for each employee on the payroll, assuming certain conditions are met. And this provision also is fairly new, and um, I'm aware that some payroll po processors have not yet set up their systems um, to allow for tracking of this. So um, you may check with your payroll processor to see if that has been done yet. But so generally, um, this credit is available to employers who are carrying on a trade or business during calendar year 2020 and whose operation of that trade or business is either fully or partially suspended during the calendar quarter due to orders from a governmental authority limiting commerce, travel, or group meetings due to COVID-19 or where there has been a significant drop in revenue of at least 50% in the first quarter of 2020 compared to the first quarter of 2019. And that credit is available um, each quarter until the revenue exceeds 80% of the same quarter in uh, 2019. Uh, the credit is based on qualified wages paid to the employee for the first $10,000 of compensation, which includes health benefits, and is provided for the wages paid or incurred from March 13th through December 31st. And eligible employers that have less than 100 full-time employees, um, all employee wages qualify for the credit, uh, regardless of whether the employee is open for business or subject to a shutdown order. And then a few other significant provisions uh, worth noting. Um, some states and local jurisdictions have announced their own economic relief packages to help with small businesses. Um, just some of the examples I'm aware of include the District of Columbia, the State of Maryland, Commonwealth of Virginia, and Montgomery County, uh, Maryland. So you might consider checking with your local jurisdiction to see if there's an economic relief package um, available to you. Uh, except for small businesses that receive the PPP loans, um, small businesses can delay up to 50% of employment taxes for 2020 and pay those, uh, pay 50% to 
December 31st, 2021, and then pay the remaining 50% uh, by December 31st, 2022. And then finally, the Temporary Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program uh, has been created through December 31st, 2020, and it provides payment to those not traditionally eligible for unemployment benefits, and that includes self-employed, independent contractors, and those with limited work history. And the CARES Act provides for an additional uh, 13 weeks of unemployment benefits through the end of 2020. Uh, due to the number of uh, provisions and the, the changing nature of um, what Congress is providing, um, if you have further questions, um, I encourage you to talk with um, a licensed attorney or an accountant or CPA in your area who can provide you with additional assistance. Uh, thank you for your time.